speaker is Robert Q. Berry III. Um, and here are his three statements. His family has nearly 200 magnets in their magnet collection. His family has nearly 50 frogs in their frog collection. His family has applied to be on the Amazing Race reality show. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Check your time. So what? somewhere. I don't care where. So it starts. <laughs> All right, let's go. So black kids do math, changing the narrative. And so one day I, I, I was kind of frustrated and I posted on Facebook. My kids said Facebook's for old people. So I was reaching out to the old folks. And what I wanted to do was have my friends, my colleagues to post everyday occurrences of their children do, doing mathematics and really using the hashtag black kids do mathematics. So this was the post I put, it up, put up on Facebook. I also tweeted it. And so from that post, I got these things back. So I got some things back from classrooms where teachers uh, posted pictures of their kids doing mathematics, Pi Day. We see rocking out the uh, slope Y intercept from peers. I also got, um, uh, tweets and, and images from my friends who show their daughter's work and on the, the other picture those are my boys and so I had tweeted out my boys as well uh, in kind of informal faces of just kind of doing everyday things. I also got tweets um, on and Facebook posts from the media and things that people found in newspapers or in the media about, you know, exceptional the young girl who's a genius at math and of course the kids from Brooklyn who came up with an app. I also got this narrative or this, this thing from you know, my friends, my colleagues in, in, in higher ed. You know, I'm going down to Livingston College to rock out black kids do mathematics. And so also other things from those who are um, in, in, in serious spaces. And so this idea of narrative um, is interesting to me. It's a connected events, it's a story. Narratives tell stories, and I'm very interested in story. And so I wonder what the story is for black kids. And so when we see these narratives, I look at headlines. And we see these headlines about achievement gap. We see these things, American uh, math and science reading are getting better, but for black kids, the gap still persists. So we see this achievement gap narrative. We also see this narrative about where are they? And the idea of where are black kids in math and sciences? Where are they in the STEM careers? Oh, you don't look like a math major. So we see this narrative of omission as well. And so that's, that was interesting to me. So what I did is I went and did a search of some databases, research databases, and I looked in four databases, and you can see from 1970 to, to the present, it's just we see that the research on black kids in mathematics or black learners in mathematics has increased. So I focused on sociological abstract, and I just kind of went through the decades. In the 70s, we see uh, research that focused on achievement gap. In the 80s, we see research that focused on course uh, enrollment patterns and test biases and workforce development. But then we see this trend in the 90s where uh, still achievement gap issues, but now those are focusing on larger data sets. And these larger data sets are comparing kids, black kids, white kids, and others. And then we also see this discourse about urbanness. And so we also see in the 90s this trend on qualitative research. In qualitative research, now we're seeing culturally relevant pedagogy, culturally relevant teaching, we're seeing case studies, we're seeing the rise of, 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 of looking at identities and race and, and language issues. In the 2000s, we see the same thing. We still see the achievement gap narrative persisting, but also we see new issues coming up, focusing on race, focusing on resiliency, focusing on success. But in, the, in these first five years of 2010 to 2015, we're now seeing these within group types of things when we look at research databases. And so we're looking at the complexity. What does it mean to be a black learner of mathematics? So we're, looking, we're finding researchers looking at those things. And so I'm making this claim that there's this master narrative about black kids. And this master narrative that persists in the larger uh, space 
position black kids as being incapable, being deficit, and being underachievers. And my hope is to change that narrative. And so these effects of master narrative has this, uh, negative effects, and particularly when we're comparing kids. Comparing black kids to white kids is kind of normative in the sense of black kids, are, uh, black kids are not like white kids, and so white kids must be normative. And so my hope is Let's see the brilliance in the ordinary, everyday occurrences of black kids. Not a counter narrative, but the ordinary, everyday things. And, and so my hope is that we will build on the mathematical lives of black kids in the spaces in which they live and learn and grow. So we look at them in school, everyday occurrences. We look at them in informal places, in their neighborhood. Not counter narratives, because that implies exceptionality. So black children are inherent, inherently creative, talent, and brilliant. So youth, black kids do mathematics when you see the brilliance in the everyday occurrences of these students. And the narrative should not focus on exceptionality. Rather, I hope this narrative focuses on these everyday things. Thank you.